But this book, is it um, is it recommended for beginners or do you need some prerequisite knowledge to, you know, to go and get this book? Because I think a lot of people watching this are going to want to get this book. It's highly recommended in the hacking community. So, um, you know, what kind of knowledge prerequisites would you need? Justin, what do you think? You know, part of me says uh, really not a lot of prerequisite knowledge. I think that Tim in particular has done a great job of like kind of bringing you in, getting you set up, and you can learn Python as you go. Now, that's not going to be for everyone. So, you know, I think if you get stuck after a chapter or two or you feel like, you know, okay, I don't quite understand some of the concepts, any kind of introductory course in Python will get you there. You do not need to learn all of the ins and outs of Python. You don't need to learn, you know, how threading works or distributed queues or any crazy stuff that maybe a cloud-based developer would need to learn or someone designing a large enterprise system or a banking fintech system. You just need the basics. How's a list work? How's a dictionary work? And then the rest of it uh, really is just kind of very specific to the task at hand. So uh, by the end of it, you're going to learn how to you know, talk to the internet using Python. You're going to learn how to simulate uh, web browsing, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and you'll write viruses, malware, whatever you want to call it, um, too. So yeah, I don't think that there's a huge barrier to entry uh, to get going with this particular book. You know, I, I've, I've seen in different spheres like there, there was this whole push in recent years in networks to to use python for network automation and um i always like to tell the story of me taking a university course and the problem with the university course is they were trying to teach me math um with python and it meant <laughs> nothing to me and what yeah. i love about like a book like this or any book where you with with where you you're not trying to learn python per se you're trying to do something and you learn python along the way so it seems like that's kind of the the same thing here. If I I want to hack, that's what I want to do. Um, Python is going to help me tremendously, and I'm going to learn Python if I don't know it too well anyway as I go through it. Because um, I'm talking too much, and I want you guys to tell me. But I, I've I've seen the code examples. You know, you kind of like mention what each line is doing. You explain what the code is doing, which is great. I started out with the the first edition of Black Hat Python teaching, and so I asked the students before they signed up to make sure that they knew the basics of Python. I mean, like Justin said, what a list is and yeah. how to write a function, how, you know, how, how to execute a program. Um, not a lot, but enough where we weren't starting with what is a variable or something yeah. like that. Uh, so it, certainly not entire, an inter, you don't need to be an intermediate programmer. You can still be a beginner. And I like what you said, because that's the way I think we all learn is yeah. I don't want to learn this language. I want to learn how to do something with this language. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. That, and I think for me, that's the way I've always learned something new is by I need a project to do that's real. And then I'll, I'll learn the, the basic, the foundation as I go. And I believe definitely you'll learn a lot in Black Cat Python by looking at these different chapters. I would say if you're just, you know, pretty new to programming, um, chapter five, which is about uh, web scraping, is a really good one to start with. A any, any chapter would be fine, but I think that is a gentle introduction uh, to the language and to what we're trying to do. And it's pretty cool because you get some some results you can look at quickly. And that's always a plus because it gives you that feeling that, oh, I am doing it. I can do it. And so you build on that success. I like what you did. I mean, right in the beginning, you like setting up Kali in a VM um, or just showing, you know, use Kali. Um, it's the way it's, a, it, it makes it a lot simpler. A lot of the tools are already built into that. Um, you're basically teaching someone from zero. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, exactly. I think uh, Justin, that, that's the way it is in the first edition as well. And I, that kind of gets everybody to the same level quickly. And so by using these VMs, there, there's so much we don't we don't have to say, well, you have to install this, you have to install that. Um, so it gets everybody up to speed pretty quickly. And then some things they choose on their own, whether they're gonna use an IDE or just a basic text editor to write their programs with it, it, it doesn't matter, but we cover a little bit of that.